Residents in some predominantly Jewish neighborhoods in the Atlanta metro area found anti-Semitic flyers. People living in Dunwoody and Sandy Springs stepped outside to find anti-Semitic flyers in Rabbi the driveway. Rabbi tells some us how one are speaking out after over 100 anti-Semitic flyers littered their yards over the weekend. Driveways and yards over the weekend. These types of incidents are on the rise here in Hinton Roads and nationwide. For us, this is just becoming a more and more alarming trend. Almost every single house in my neighborhood had these vile flyers in their driveway. I was really shaken. I saw it just laying right there, and, and my heart just stopped, knowing that in the middle of the night while my family was sleeping, an anti-Semitic, hate-filled individual was in my neighborhood at my home, dropping off vile horrid lies about my friends, my family, and me. I grew up in the South, and I am used to this kind of thing. It doesn't surprise me that this kind of thing happens, but when it comes that close in your neighborhood and they seem to be identifying who's Jewish, it's a little threatening under. When you think about that, you're just, your children could be exposed to this, and physically threatening, but it's, to me, what was more important was the community responding to it. There's always gonna be people that hate Jews. What, what matters is how people respond. Our daughter uh, had called me uh, that morning and said, did you get, a, did you get an anti-Semitic flyer? I, I, uh, I actually walked down to the door, looked, looked outside, said, no, we didn't get anything. And then about half an hour later, I was uh, looking out the window of my office, which overlooks the driveway, and I saw something down there. I said, well, go take a look and see what's there. And uh, sure enough, uh, was this anti-Semitic screed that was remarkably ugly. I felt safer in the moment before than I did after. I'm still shocked that we are living in an era where anti-Semitism has reared its ugly head yet once again. But I didn't realize the difference between talking and deeply experiencing. It's come to not only my community, but my home. And it makes me concerned about my children, not in an abstract way, but in a very real physical way. Hatred of any kind is, is just so corrosive to the social fabric of a society. Whenever times get difficult, anti-Semitism and difficult times have always run together. That's, that's historically a fact that uh, the Jews have often been scapegoated as being associated with what, whatever problems occur in a given era, uh, you can tie the Jews to. The issue of anti-Semitism is, is just problematic uh, for, for all of us. And one of the things that, that really informs me and inspires me to be a part of pushing back against that really are the words from Dr. Martin Luther King, where he said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In the lead up to the Holocaust, you would see flyers like this and you saw where it led. The problem is it, it goes from words to deeds. The rise of Hitler didn't occur in a vacuum. It didn't occur beginning with violence, but it ended with uh, you know, with, with the murder of over six million Jews and millions and millions of others and the worst world war in, in, in the history of this world. The first exhibit in, in Yad Vashem is about uh, life before the Holocaust. The German Jewish community was the most assimilated community in Jewish history up until that point. And one of the reasons why many people who could have gotten out in the 30s didn't was the comment was, oh, this will blow over like it always has in the past. It never happened here. You know, that uh, Germany's always been a haven for, uh, for Jewry. Uh, and, and it was. And a lot of these people said, of course we'll be fine. Well, you know, they, of course they were not. When it matters to stand up is in response to this kind of nonsense, not later on when it's mainstream view. And when you have an army and you are an unarmed man or woman child facing a firing squad, Literally, it's, it's too late to stand up, and that's why this has to be taken seriously, and that's why anti-Semitism has to be combated in all forms, because we know where it leads. And that's why, thank God, we have 11 million Kufi members, we have friends in America, we have Israel, 
that it will never be 1938 again, but we also have to ensure that we take all the steps necessary to make that a hard stop, never again, not a question mark. It's really our friends in the Christian community and Christian Zionists in particular that, uh, that are really critical in, in, in addressing this and making it clear that this is unacceptable. It's, it's, this has got to stop. Our non-Jewish neighbors responded, and it was kind of, it was heartwarming to see the response was to go outside with their kids and to chuck up their driveways with statements of support, you know, love not hate and things of that nature. It is important when we see these kinds of things happening to stand up and say, this is not okay. It's not okay that, that um, lies are being told. So, so when that happens, we, we have to stand up.